Hello, my name is Ansel, and I want to talk today about the history of money and how Bitcoin fits into the history of money, um, and why Bitcoin is probably the most superior currency that we've ever seen. And that includes versus the dollar and versus gold. Uh, Bitcoin is superior. Defining money, that's not an easy topic. And um, most people don't understand what money is. They take it for granted because they get a paycheck in their account every two weeks. And they go out and spend it. They save very little of it. They probably spend more than they make every month on average. So it's, uh, people don't really understand. As long as that paycheck's coming in, they're, they're happy. They don't care about it. And frankly, the, ex the experts have actually created this like screen around how money works. They've hidden it. They say, oh, it's too complicated for people to understand. You have PhDs. You have Princeton and Yale and uh, Chicago School of Business uh, or S Chicago uh, School of Economics and, and all these places where you have to get certified and, and credentialed to understand what money is. But money really isn't that hard to understand. It's basic ideas. Um, they just kind of want to make it sound scary so that you don't look into it more. You just say, oh, the experts will handle it for us. Um, but good thing you guys are here at Bitcoin Meetup. That means you're actually still curious and still uh, trying to figure out uh, about money and, and your thinking, which most people aren't doing. <laughs> the easiest way to describe what money is to go back and look at the history of money. So how it was created and how it came to be used day, day to day. The commonly held belief is that there was a time in commerce that was before money. So people used barter. You traded a sheep for a goat or beads for a blade. And that's what people think of as uh, before, what happened before money. But there's no, there's no evidence of that. The archaeological record, there's, there's no evidence of any time in history or any civilization using barter, at least for any prolonged period of time. What happened, the first form of money was a mental ledger. So when somebody uh, killed a deer, they would cut it up and they would hand it out to people. And those people, he would keep track in his mind who owed him for that meat. So that was the first ledger and the first form of money was just a simple mental IOU. Kind of like we have IOUs today, right, is, is a form of money. So that was the first form of money. Because that, that's separate from barter, because barter has two unique sides of each transaction. You have uh, beads and you have flint or whatever is on the other side. The next transaction would have uh, a sheep and a goat. So those are unique. But when you have a money, one side is always the same. So in today's world, one side of every transaction is dollars or Bitcoin. So that's, that's what separates the use of money versus the use of barter. Um, so yeah, there's no evidence of barter ever being used for commerce. But then people quickly found that uh, certain goods that other people wanted. So they, you know, they were really good at, at making beads and people always wanted to buy those beads. So they started using beads and they were in small tribes. And so, you know, they used beads or shells or uh, arrowheads or whatever is uh, even oxen or livestock of some sort. So that, that quickly became money because the ledger came out of their mind and came to be an objective ledger so that they could keep track uh, physically of what is owed to people. Um, so then there's a few things and if we follow the line of how these currencies or how money evolved we can see that there are characteristics that evolve with money. So those characteristics are it has to be scarce, it has to be durable, transportable, recognizable, divisible, and fungible. And I add in there securable because I think that's an emerging property of money now is uh, it's going to differentiate if it's more secure versus less secure for, for money. Um, the most important one is that it's scarce and everybody knows that. That's, that's been, I mean, it's completely understandable that you can't use leaves as money because you just go pick leaves and now people owe you more because you, you have more IOUs because those leave, money is really just IOUs. You can't use sticks, et cetera. It has to be scarce, and that's 
Um, one reason why gold emerged as the premier currency because it was most universally scarce. Um, scarcity is related, I, in my mind, to the second most important characteristic, and that's durability. Beads fade or break, flint uh, blades dull, barley rots, oxen die. These things were used as money, but they fall on a gradient of durability. And this is something that I have recently been thinking a lot about. Uh, the more durable a currency is, the more you can save, obviously. So when you have gold, you can actually accumulate capital and save and invest and be innovative by investing in somebody else or using your time later down the road to create new things. But when you use a currency or a money that's not durable, like barley, which the shekel, you know, the shekel was used um, for millennia in the Babylon area, that was based on barley, or oxen, you can't really save those up that easily. So those type of monies, they, they, they formed the society around the less durable money that was dependent on flow. So the currency flow through um, the economy. You couldn't save, so you, you harvested and you spent. You, you harvested and you spent. You couldn't accumulate capital. That, we can see that now today, too, because the dollar is not very durable. The dial, dollar has lost, what, like 98% of its value in the last 100 years? It's, <laughs> it's, it's a, not a very durable currency, and especially now with QE, we see that it's all about flow. It's about Com money coming into the economy and money going out of the economy or being spent. So the systems that form around less durable currencies are centralized power. They control the flow of the economy. When you have more durable currencies like gold or silver or Bitcoin, the, the, the structure of society gets decentralized because you can save and innovate and hide your money and, and all the, these things. So. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there about durability. Uh, let's see. Transportability. Eh. It's also highly important, but I also think of this together with divisibility. So um, there are great stores of wealth like gold, but gold is not necessarily that good for transacting because you have $1,000 in one ounce, right? So what they do to, to increase the divisibility and the transportability of gold to be used in transactions they put it they dug it out of the ground then they stuck it back in the ground in vaults and they started issuing the um, gold certificates and you could have any denomination of gold certificates you could have one dollar or a thousand dollars and it didn't really matter it made it very divisible very transportable but of course, in doing that, they affected the other aspects of money, one of the other, the most important aspect of money, which is scarcity. So they, they sacrificed scarcity to get more transportability and divisibility um, with gold. And gold is, is, uh, gold is susceptible to that. And that's why one of the reasons why Bitcoin is superior to gold, because you can't do that necessarily with Bitcoin. So, so that brings me just to talk about Bitcoin. Um, gold and silver uh, were the best ledger or the best form of money before Bitcoin came around. Um, but the, for the first time in 5,000 years, we have a thing that's superior to gold, and that is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is more scarce. There's only 21 million that will ever be available, and that can't be expanded by finding new deposits. So gold, you can, if the the price is elastic, so if the price goes up, people are going to be incentivized to go and look for new gold. And they might find a huge vein and increase the supply of gold by 10% or something. Um, so, but that elasticity is not there with Bitcoin, that it will not go over 21 million, and it's very predictable. So it's more scarce than gold. Um, Bitcoin is more transportable, obviously, and that releases people from the need to store money with a third party. So it, you don't have to have the risk of fractional reserve banking and, and doing that because with Bitcoin, you just keep it yourself and you control it. There's no third parties. 
and Bitcoin is more divisible. It goes down to 100 million, um, what is it, eight decimal places. So 100 million bit, uh, Satoshis in, in a Bitcoin. So it's more divisible than gold. It's more recognizable. Your wallet that you use for your Bitcoin automatically will recognize if that is a good Bitcoin or not. You can't do that with gold or silver. I mean, it has maybe a sound to it or a certain feel to a real gold coin, but you don't know. It could be fake. It could be clipped. It could be something that you can't detect right away, but your Bitcoin wallet will detect if it's a good or bad Bitcoin immediately. Uh, it's more fungible and it's more securable, which I think is uh, securable is a new thing that people are going to be talking about a lot with money, I believe, because with, with gold and silver and dollars, you, you might be able to save it in a, in a bank account or whatever, but that bank account is not secure. They can come in, seize your bitcoins, freeze your account, or seize your dollars, uh, freeze your account, but with bitcoin they can't do that. So I think this secure ability, secure ability or the ability to secure your money is going to be an emergent property that is going to be very important in the future. And that is all I have. Do you guys have any questions?